Fox 11 Sports with John Duran. Khalil Mack was asked this week, what's his favorite part about this Packers-Bears rivalry? And with a smile, he said, sacking Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, and that decision not to practice actually wasn't the players. Matt LaFleur sounded like this morning practice was a go. That was until the entire team met. That meeting went long. LaFleur said players spoke emotionally, passionately about their own experiences with racial injustices. LaFleur described it as emotionally draining, so he decided to call practice. And they realized they could be a team that is better than just getting into the playoffs or even winning the division. This team started to aim for a first round playoff bye, and they wanted the road to the Super Bowl, at least in the NFC, to run through Lambeau Field. You guys are going to have a night to celebrate this, so what's the plane ride going to be like tonight? Oh, it's going to be fun. We're going to be playing some, playing some <laughs> music, you know, dancing, Lit. having fun, having some good food. But as soon as we land, we're going to bed, mm. and we're going to bed. He won. He won. I ain't going to bed. No, no, no. Stay that much. Yeah, the focus of this Eastern Conference final series will be each team's superstar player. And for the first time in nine years, one of those guys isn't LeBron James. Got to think there's a lot of parallels as the Packers and Devontae Adams come back to the Bay Area and play in the NFC Championship game where maybe on a national scale, nobody's giving this team a shot. Midside the Oshkosh YMCA for the Wisconsin Herd Open tryout. They're the Milwaukee Bucks G League affiliate. I never played in college. I didn't play in high school, but here goes nothing. Yo, I know you want to shoot the ball. I get it. I'm, and I'm I know open. you want to I'm shoot open. the ball, but you got to box out. I mean, you gave up six points to some offensive rebounds. A wait of nearly 50 years is down to less than 48 hours. Jerry Kramer will finally be enshrined into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. The NFC North leading Packers still have some work to do the final weeks of the season. First, to actually seal a playoff spot, which they could get done this weekend if they beat the Chicago Bears and the LA Rams lose. Steps off the bus in Canada. Hello and welcome to the training camp report. That's Johnny Gray. I'm John Durant. We're less than a day away from kickoff in Winnipeg. The Packers Raiders preseason game number three. Johnny Sunday Pittsburgh winning 5-1. But here's Pirates first year manager Derek Shelton barking at the ump. He gets the heave ho and he's going to come out and have a word with Jordan Baker. But this is baseball in 2020. We get our masks out and we're keeping our distance. And even in the middle of August, the Packers offense expects to see some challenging looks, usually reserved for the regular season. We are supposed to see Aaron Rodgers take on that defense at least for a little bit today. Some news breaking just moments ago from the team. Now we go live to m t Bank Stadium where Ryan Wing is standing by. Ryan, what more can you tell us? Time now to give out our final helmet stickers of this season. And there is some prime real estate right on the front of this bad boy. Sports producer Garrett Stoltz Working hard all year behind the scenes. He's going to give his to St. Mary Springs, the only area team to bring home gold, a 7 nothing win. And by the way, the Ledger's fourth shutout of the postseason. Pretty incredible. I'm sure you've heard a million times the situation you're coming into, the guy ahead of you. Are you sick of that? Um, I mean, I haven't, I haven't looked too much into it. I, obviously, I hear my friends talking about it all the time and all that, but you know, I don't look into it. it. It is what it is. I think it was like week eight or something. You said that Aaron was already playing with a playoff stare. Yeah. How often do you see that, and what's it like playing with that Aaron Rodgers? You know, he's always had that look in his eye. Yeah, and the team really taking it easy this week. And Johnny, I say week, but it was only three days ago the Packers beat the Broncos here at Lambeau Field. He said this year he doesn't have to be the guy that's throwing 40 touchdowns. It's been a little bit more balanced attack. But if they want to go after a Super Bowl, do you think, does he need to flip a switch? Well, I think he's got to play a lot better than he has over the last yeah. couple of weeks. Yes, yeah, so I asked Devontae about his high school playing game since we are only about 10 miles right now from Palo Alto High School where he went. Now, Devontae didn't play football his freshman or sophomore year after playing in middle school. So this week I asked him, well, who convinced you to pick the sport up again? And he gave credit to his cousin, Eric Washington, for pushing him to give football another shot. So when we came to the Bay area, I tracked down Washington, heard his side of the story, also heard, heard from uh, legendary Palo Alto head coach Earl Hansen. This is really a dream come true for me. Devontae Adams is one of the few Packers playing with home field advantage in Santa Clara. Obviously it's not me playing in the Super Bowl in the Bay Area, but it's the next best thing. The NFC Championship game will be played just about 10 miles from where Adams began his career as a wide receiver at Palo Alto High School. I don't know what it is, but we do 
seem to produce some receivers around here. <laughs> Retired head football coach Earl Hansen recalls how Adams helped win the program's only state championship. Coach Hansen of the Silver Fox, like I like to call him, he, uh, he had a lot to do with my success early on. He's one of the special kids that we ever had, and that was a special team, and he was one of the, one of the guys that, that really came through for us. But football wasn't Adams' first love. In fact, a broken left arm kept him off the gridiron his freshman and sophomore years. Still, he needed some motivation to get back to football. My cousin Eric Washington was definitely the guy who pushed me on that. Washington, Adams' older cousin, said the push came after he signed him up for a football camp the summer before his junior year. At this time, we were both living together at my grandmother's house and uh, tried to wake him up. He wouldn't get up. And so I just lost it on him. You, you're not going to be nothing. You don't want to work hard. It's what a, you'll never make it. The NFL won't happen for you because you don't want to work hard. And I left him. He ended up uh, starting football like maybe about a month or two later. And obviously it's, it's been the greatest decision of my life. This weekend's NFC Championship game, the 49ers are favored to beat the Packers by more than a touchdown. But as his high school coach tells us, overcoming those odds are similar to what his team did in the 2010 state championship game. They're, they're favorites, but not by 50 points like they were in high school. You know, you can play in the big, in the big stage and you can have great games in, the, in big games, which he proved in high school. So walking by, we see a couple of guys wearing number 10 Palo Alto jerseys. That's Devontae Adams High School jersey. There you see it. And in that state championship game, Coach Hanson was talking about they were playing the number four ranked team in the nation, Corona Centennial. Devontae's Palo Alto team won that game 15 to 13. Coach Hanson, I asked him about it. He said, everybody was telling me we were outrageous underdogs in that game. He didn't believe it. Got to think there's a lot of parallels as the Packers and Devontae Adams come back to the Bay Area and play in the NFC Championship game where maybe on a national scale, nobody's giving this team a shot. And at one point, this line was several hundred people deep. It was supposed to be a two-day sale, but that second day won't be necessary as Packers fans snagged everything up. He may be a multi-million dollar man. But when he packs up and moves, Eddie Lacy gets rid of stuff just like everybody else. A good old fashioned garage sale. Everybody, calm down. I left work to come here. I have to show you my most treasured birthday gift that a friend made me. The only difference between your garage sale or mine is that Lacy can draw crowds of hundreds of people hours before it starts. Is this a surprise to see this many people out here? Not really, Ixi. Uh, Packer fans turn out for their players and. I'm not surprised at all that, that this many people want to come out and see what uh, Eddie was selling from his home. got up like 9.30, checked my phone, um, I saw on Twitter that Eddie uh, tweeted his uh, address, so I immediately just came over here right away and I got to the front of the line. Yeah, it's better than class though, so. Let's <laughs> <laughs> you know, hope your teacher's not watching this. At the sale were some hats, shirts, and game-worn cleats. You can see the, like the... The dirt, the, the, it's roughed up a little bit. How cool is that? Does that add some like value to, to what you're Oh, to me it does. I love the game used stuff. I'd say, I'd say it was actually in use in a game at Lambeau or somewhere out in a stadium. It's a one of a kind thing. But that's not all you could walk away with. I see, you know, you picked out a few things. One of these, you got a can of soup. Yeah. Did you wake up this morning thinking you were coming to Eddie Lacy's garage sale yeah. and you were going to come away with some soup? You never know. You never know what you're going to find here, I guess. I know he was kind of known for his weight and stuff, so I figured I'd find a get, a, get some soup. That is Eddie Lacy's mouth guard. What in the world are you going to do with that? I don't know. I don't know. Put it under my pillow and sleep with it, maybe? I don't know. But it's so awesome! Packers fans may not get to cheer Lacy on week one of the NFL season when he's donning a Seattle Seahawks jersey, but today, they're his biggest fan. Belting a home run getting a win on game day. The baseball talent is clear. But the competitive nature of Bryce Terang isn't limited to the diamond. All right, this is the strike lane right here. Here we go. The Brewers' third-ranked prospect can let it fly on the field and on the lanes. It's like golf. Once you know how to shoot, it's fun. You know, in baseball, once you know how to hit, it's fun. There it is. Before his baseball career took off, he says in high school, he was at the bowling alley a couple times a week. And I was averaging probably around 180. Like, I was killing it. But for the most part, Terang's had to hang up the bowling shoes and now rarely gets a chance 
to use his custom-made ball. Everything was fitted. Fingers fitted, thumb fitted, everything. Still facing the pins much like staring down an opposing pitcher, Terang appreciates any chance to compete. You can have bad days and people can beat you and you can have really good days and you can smoke everybody. It's a competitive nature his manager Matt Erickson sees every day. Yeah, he wants to win. You know, you can see him uh, just in the little games, the competitive games that we have here in batting practice. We'll have a king of the, the infield kind of thing and, and he gets competitive in, in everything that he does. And an attitude he hopes one day brings him to the pinnacle of baseball. Everybody has a dream like my dream make it to the big leagues, be the best player in the big leagues. I know high standards, but I mean, it's a dream. The 19-year-old taking his professional career one day at a time. And this afternoon, playing one frame at a time. Finishing the 10th, how he rarely finishes an at-bat. Three strikes in a row. In Appleton, John Duran, Fox 11 Sports. With every dip in the paint and stroke of the brush, Spencer Young continues to live his dream. It's unreal. I still wake up and I can't believe I'm doing this for a living. In 2014, Young started his own business, a blank canvas where he can mix a couple of his passions, painting and the Green Bay Packers. My first painting I ever did was of Demarius Randall. And it was, I mean, it was a 15 minute painting. I thought, well, if I'm doing a painting, I might as well post it online and see if anyone else is going to like it. Maybe not just myself. So, like I said, it's just one post and next thing you know, wow, someone like that, status of a person like that. His talents have even connected him with members of the Packers, like Mike Daniels, who found Young's work on social media. You know, I just do the simple tags, hashtags, and he contacted me privately and he wanted to meet and get the painting and we exchanged memorabilia and such. When you watch a game on Sunday, like these guys are like superheroes. Like you don't, you don't imagine them being normal like us, but then when you meet them and they see your painting, it's like, oh my gosh, this is how I react when I watch them play on Sunday. Packers fans are probably already familiar with Spencer's work. He's the artist behind the Hale Rogers fence painting across from Lambeau Field. It was just like the greatest play ever witnessed. I mean, in my lifetime, I've never seen anything like that. I thought I was going to get evicted out of my apartment. I was so loud. I feel like I'm leaving my mark and I'm leaving my legacy a part of, like this is a huge legacy being in La at Lambeau Field, but to even be considered like a thought of like, wow, this guy painted the fences right across from this historical place. The art on the fence will change before the start of this season, only to be replaced by more of Young's work, as he'll paint over it with a brand new mural. In Green Bay, John Duran, Fox 11 Sports.